Um, I would like to call the meeting uh, to order. Uh, and those present today are myself, um, Marcia Martin, Sheila Conroy, Susan Ailing, Julie Hauser, Art Quintana, Michelle Preka, uh, and Prudence Carter. Do we have any guests this morning? I see no guests. I hear no guests. I had no invitations or requests. Um, as far as reviewing uh, protocol, I think we're going to be voting on some things today, like officers and uh, uh, raise of hand where they can be seen. If everyone is comfortable with that, will that be okay? All right. Um, well, introductions and welcomes. Um, I would. Uh, <laughs> like to introduce Julie and Sheila as our new board members and welcome them. They're all very well known to us. So I think that uh, their introduction has preceded them here today. Um, we have no public to be heard. Has everyone had the opportunity to review the minutes from last meeting? And if so, are there any corrections? I see no corrections. I think Sarah did a commendable job as usual, and I would move that we accept the meeting, the uh, minutes as written. I hear a second for that movement. Uh, the movement was made by Susan and seconded by Art and Prudence, Michelle. So you can note that. Um, moving on to old business, um, we've welcomed the new board members and, uh, I know this is a real exciting time for everyone because we want to confirm officers for, uh, 2021 and, um, I am, uh, anxious to hear if, uh, there are those people that are interested in being president for this next year. Where are all those hands? No hands, Susan? <laughs> I will be glad to step up. Perhaps someone's interested in being secretary. I was thinking perhaps you, Prudence? Sure. <laughs> Whoa, two with one. <laughs> All right. Um, Vice President. All right. Uh, Art. Great. Art's going to do Vice President. I love it. This is great. Now, I'm not sure of the protocol, Michelle. Perhaps you can either, Michelle. A motion for each position. You can do a motion by position or you can do a motion for the slate. Um, if somebody wants to, 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 however, whoever makes the motion would like to do that and then a second and then a vote. I'll make a motion for the slate. I'll second that. So the slate will be Susan for president. Art for Vice President, and Prudence for Secretary. And then a vote on that, Janine. Uh, can we have a motion for accepting those people in positions? And it has been seconded. We can show hands for those who uh, are eyes. One, two, three, four. Prudence, five. raise your hand. There, she's got water. <laughs> okay, got it, Prudence. <laughs> the eyes have it. Everyone has voted to approve. So congratulations. And uh, Susan, I am very 
happy to help in any way I can. Um, to Thank assist. you, Janine. You've done a great job this year. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Um, now, positions are available for... Um, so this is um, how I read the December minutes. Um, it, it, and Michelle Krieger, maybe you have an update from TRG, but at this point, Michelle um, is on the city's technical review group. That is the affordable housing uh, group that does a fund recommendation. And she is your representative till the end of March. And um, I don't know, Michelle, what you're thinking about. If something were to happen, you'd shoot an email to myself or to Susan now, and we'd share that or how you want to do that. Um, and that position, my understanding is the TRG might be undergoing some change as to how they operate. Maybe you have an update on that. Maybe we won't need to refill that in April. So that's one. And then Jack wanted to continue on the sustainability committee, um, but that we don't have any information about how he, if he wants to continue to relay that or represent you, or if there's somebody else on the current board who'd like to step in and join that sustainability committee. So those were the two that didn't jump out at me from the minutes as to having any resolution. So Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about the TRG and what you know? Well, I um, I know that there was a, so there has been some structural change. It used to be um, that TRG would meet and then they would send information to the, um, um, with HHS or whatever the housing, um, the, the, the larger board. And, um, so towards the end of the year that got changed where there were joint, um, uh, meetings with the applicants for money for housing development. And, um, I know that there was a, a kind of last minute, um, request for money and, 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 and it went before the housing uh, board and I wasn't able to attend. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I know there's something coming up right now with um, Cinnamon Park, which is actually relevant to this group. Um, but there's just, we're just in the process of trying to organize a time when everybody can meet and there's kind of a fast, trying to fast track it a little bit. Um, as far as restructuring, I don't really, I haven't heard anything about any restructuring that would um so anyway i can't respond to that because i i don't i don't know what's going on and and if that would eliminate um our kind of participation in that or the need for some rep representative from the board but anyway and i'm happy to do i guess what i'll do is just kind of keep an email touch with you michelle and you susan um, um, through, I, I don't know, through March or until March, I don't know. So I'm okay. happy to do that. So we should just kind of hold this spot until we know more about the structural piece and yeah. some, some late, maybe February or March, you'll have some information. Yeah. Well, now that you've alerted me, I, I may, maybe I'll reach out to Kathy. Yeah. She's been out, um, but she is now back working. Uh, she's working from home, but she is okay. working. So okay. she should she should be response. Uh, okay. Respond. Okay. So should I make a motion that um, Michelle remains in that position for I think, the time being? I think we already did that, Janine. I thought we did it last last month. So okay. I'm just going to put this down as a future agenda item for later in the spring, if that makes the most sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, sustainability, um, I was alternate to Jack um, for sustainability, and I am willing to attend those meetings unless someone else is interested in having that position. OK. 
Can I hear a motion on that if anyone else, or if anyone is interested in being on uh, sustainability? I motion that Jean, Janine be our representative at, on the sustainability committee. I'll second it. And any other old business? Well, this is um, a little late in the game, but it's probably important to say, which is according to your bylaws. So you are now a board of six. Um, typically the advisory boards have an odd number with an alternate and you are you don't have that seventh position and you don't have an alternate the bylaws read a quorum is four and it actually says four in the bylaws so um i think that still stands true for a vote of six uh, of you so i just want to just point that out and acknowledge that um if there were a tie for some reason, a 3-3 three, three thing, um, my experience has been is the president doesn't vote, but I don't know if one of you wanna just sort of say until we fill those uh, other positions, if you wanna um, identify how you wanna do a tie if there was one, just so we have this done before we would ever need to <laughs> employ it. So I'm just throwing it out there. Um, it's not really old business, but I don't wanna move too far mm -hmm. along in the agenda. So are we still on the hunt for another person? So uh, that's actually an agenda item down under new business. Um, council and maybe Marcia can update us, but they won't do appointments again until late spring. Um, so we have some time to do some recruitment, but it will likely be a board of six for um, the next several months anyways. And but, I'm happy to step back so that there, if there's a tie vote, don't count me, that's fine. So do we need to make a motion for that? I don't, you know, I don't, I think it would be helpful just to have an agreement about how you want to do time. Right. Yeah. So. I see a show of hands for people that uh, accept that agreement that in the event of the tie that Susan will step back from the vote. Okay. That would be all of us. All righty. Good thing we're not split down the middle on that one. I yeah, know. I know. We'd let Marsha make this choice. <laughs> <laughs> Defer to the higher authority here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to uh, new business, health and wellness in the facility. Michelle, so, is that your? Yeah, so that's uh, my agenda item. And I don't know how many of you know the history, how many of you have been familiar, but since 2001, Longmont United Hospital has had a presence here at the Senior Center. They have had office space, they have had a massage room, they have been a partner in doing health education programs, health screenings, cancer, skin cancer screenings, et cetera, balance screenings. Um, and so early last year and even late fall of 2019, Longmont United Hospital started making changes. And over the course of the, the last year, year and a half, they have closed their um, Center for Health Integrated Medicine. Um, they have uh, laid off their massage therapists, their staff, um, that core entity whom we've had the relationship with no longer really exists. Um, they still have an office here, um, though no one's been occupying it since we've been closed due to COVID. 
So I'm throwing this idea out there. Um, we wrote that scope of services 20 years ago. Longmont United, the YMCA were um, applicants uh, to move in and be a health and wellness partner. Is it time to maybe use this closure time and the re kind of rethinking at LUH to redesign a, a, a reopen, redo a health and wellness scope of services and look for an, a, a different uh, approach? Maybe not a different partner, um, but um, I'm just kind of throwing that this this open to you all. You as a board 20 years ago, the board chose the health and wellness provider who moved into the senior center. You would be involved in this if we go this route. So I'm just kind of throwing the doors open, wiping the slate clean and see what you think. Prudence. Um, <clears throat> how were the health and wellness services, do we know what their utilization is? Um, were, um, were they used were some used and some not used, I guess is, is really where I'm aiming. Yeah, great question. So we stuck with a regular free nurse clinic for the last 20 years. It never gained the numbers that I wanted it to gain. Um, but also during the 20 years, Walgreens did flu, you know, free flu shots and you could go to any pharmacy on a certain day and talk to somebody about something. So um, it never it never really gained the traction I wanted it to gain. The massage uh, on the days it was here was very popular. They were key in our health education programs because they had all the contacts with the physicians and the nurse practitioners and the specialists. They had their finger on the pulse of what was happening in the healthcare world. Um, we were really fortunate. We had some pretty innovative folks who were on staff and we did uh, programs on sexuality. We did programs on death and dying and choice around death and dying. We, we did a lot of, uh, I think, pretty cutting edge, uh, innovative kinds of things because of their partnership. Again, it wasn't always super significant, like 300 people showed up, right, no. but, but it was important and it was good and it was balanced uh, from a traditional med medicine to uh, more um, complementary medicine. So we had that whole, that whole range. Um, yeah. Susan. And that is probably the most missed uh, part of the senior center for me. I would attend the seminars, the lectures, and bring that back to the community. I would use the uh, massage. I attended the death and dying clinics. I found it fascinating and well worth the time and effort spent to have this in the senior center. Janine and then Sheila. Answer your question, Michelle. Yes, I think we need to continue to pursue, uh, you know, whether we need to alter the program or not. I think that the health and wellness aspect at the senior center is extremely important uh, to be able to offer that to people in need. Um, and I have mentioned before that, especially under the circumstances, I am more than happy to volunteer in any way I can. Um, I know that there were, um, there were a massage therapy group uh, that were let go at the hospital. I, I also know that they are currently, they have a private practice. Right. Uh, they've opened a private practice, so I'm wondering if we might be able to contact them and see if uh, they are still interested in uh, um, supporting the senior center in some way. And if 
attendance is an issue, then, you know, maybe we can um, alter the number of programs that are presented without completely eliminating those programs because I think they're extremely important. Sheila. Yes, you mentioned the, uh, the flu shots and the, that's really gone by the wayside as far as including that in the health and wellness. What other, <coughs> excuse me, what other activities do you feel or underutilized so that, um, in a word, they could be eliminated in the reincarnation. Yeah, I think that um, the so along the way, we did some acupuncture that was great, um, and then as uh, Longmont grew, we had a private acupuncture clinics pop up, you know, and we were able to make adjustments. With, along the way with some things. One of my disappointments uh, was that originally Longmont United Hospital managed a foot clinic and they got out of the foot clinic business. And so we had an agreement with a private uh, foot care provider. I want that to come back, but I want it to be under the management of a healthcare organization. I don't, I don't want to have to manage the rules and the regs around that. So I want foot care to come back. Um, I want massage to come back. I want health education to come back. And one of the really great things about the partnership was their staff and our staff would come together. So um, every quarter they would meet and they would talk about what are you seeing? And so we did a whole series on incontinence um, because several folks, throughout the center were working with people who were really struggling, who were becoming very isolated because of their incontinence, who were really not getting the treatment um, they felt like they needed for their incontinence. And so that partnership around programming is really where the creativity came from, Sheila, and where new programs would emerge or new, you know, new educational things would emerge. And um, I, that partnership was key to keeping things fresh and innovative and people mm -hmm. coming. And so the services side, massage, foot clinic, nurse clinic, um, the foot clinic is probably the number one request I get. Why don't we have foot clinic services mm -hmm. here? Um, so that's, that's old, but but going forward, what are we going to do around pandemics? What are we going to do about our immune system, building our immune systems? I mean, there is so much coming at us that's new. I'd like to have a health partner who's a part of that. Prudence, it looks like you were about to say something. I, I think Marsha was ahead of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, Marsha. Sorry. No, that's okay. No, actually, you pretty much said it. I was just going to weigh in as a diabetic who, mm -hmm. uh, you know, losing visual acuity right. is hard right yeah. and even though i haven't used the clinic i recognize that as a really high need it's so interesting the number of people who want to come here for foot care <laughs> rather ah. than a doctor's office it just i find it just interesting you know because there's not much privacy here <laughs> around that but <laughs> Prudence. I was going Sorry, to just a minute. I need to uh, mute for a minute. Um, I I was thinking of um, one of the things you said, Michelle, is that the the nurse the nurse of him or herself was not the most popular. So I'm also thinking whether um, we can expand the program to do something like arthritis management and that's the use of an occupational therapist they're the ones who um really are the people who deal with your hands and stuff like that um and then i was also thinking of and it could be an occupational therapist aid whoever our partner is or a physical therapist aid or PT, whoever our partner is, to work on um, 
in, uh, walking and balance. I know that there are classes for that. Mm -hmm. However, with both those things, arthritis and balance and walking, they come up um, gradually and sometimes suddenly. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I think that, you know, that's, those are just some ideas I had about that. I want to come back to that, Prudence. Um, Janine, go ahead, but you're still muted. There you go. Um, I just want to mention that if in any way possible, uh, if we can work with and negotiate with, you know, a hospital or an organization, you know, part of my um, concerns in doing things at the senior center that I could easily do to support have to do with malpractice. And when you talk about procedural things, be it massage or acupuncture or foot care, it's very important that the person that even if they're volunteering those services are covered with some type of malpractice coverage and that there is consideration for HIPAA. That's just the legal stuff that evolves around that. And I think that before we didn't have to worry about that because it was through the hospital, right. we are not united. So as we pursue bringing this, these programs back, I think that we need to pay attention to having a partner to address these issues. So that's kind of back to my initial um, question at some level. So we've had a partnership with Longmont United for 20, 20 years. In the course of the 20 years, we now have UC Health um, as a community health uh, hospital and community health care provider. Kaiser has grown their services over the last 20 years. Um, and then we have others, you know, that have, at least in my lifetime here, have, have grown. Um, one of, so, so I need to end the current relationship with Longmont United if we're going to open up a new scope of services. And I want to be really clear, they have been a fabulous partner. And between their corporate changes and COVID, it's been very hard to keep that partnership connected. Um, and I also think it's an, an opportune time to sort of rewrite the scope. And Prudence, you're identifying arthritis. Do they have PTs and OTs? They can bring in and do work. Um, balance, we've we've always sort of done balance in September, and it's really a year-round thing. Ba balance is not just a fall thing. Um, eye care um, and dental care. Um, most hospitals don't don't have strong um, eye and dental. But what they do get is the person who let their dental issues go unchecked and they end up in the ICU with a mm -hmm. infection throughout their body because of their lack of oral health. So I am interested in rewriting what we're looking for. And Longmont United can, could absolutely apply for sure. And I would hope other partners would apply. And then we would come back and review that. As a, as a board. Um, so first we would write that scope and then we would review any applicants who might be interested in being that on-site partner. Um, so I am curious because some of you have a affiliation with Longmont United, you know what a great partner they've been. Um, do we rewrite the scope and open it up? How do you feel about the gentle goodbye <laughs> to Longmont United um, and then reissuing it. It's, I'm, I am aware that there are, there are other issues in the community. I'm trying to be very respectful and appreciative of Longmont United, but also recognize this is a, um, it's a tender thing, I guess. So Janine.
is what is the status of Longmont United? I mean, are the way I look at it, I am willing to work at, with partnerships with whoever is willing to work with us. And I know certainly part of the issue for them uh, was cutting back financially. So for me, I had no problem whatsoever with what they were providing and was very appreciative of it. But I wonder if, you know, if they're limited in what they are able to uh, to provide to us. And do we do do we need to, you know, look farther out in the community to get the services that we want for the senior center? Right. Prudence and then Susan. So Michelle, um, I hear what everybody's saying about Long Mountain United and they kind of, um, I'll use this word, abandoned, you know, their warm pool and other services. So I'm not really sure of their continued interest. And I'm wondering whether we need one provider or whether we can say, okay, let's approach, let's make a list of who we can approach. Acupuncturists, massage therapists, the foot I, I understand completely. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering whether, we, I, I think it was Art. Was Art a dentist? Because he was going to reach out to some people he knew about maybe once a month or quarterly clinic for dental care. I don't know whether that happened. I had sent him, because um, there is a, a dental society. Right, dental aid had reached out and we were headed down that path until COVID. We okay. had things scheduled, we had to cancel. Okay, okay. Because so. I think, um, you know, uh, the dentist is probably the first person who notices the diabetes. Right. Um, <laughs> so um, if that's a, that's a partnership that I would like to see grow. And I think as far as Longmont United, you know, I think it's pretty up in the air what they really want to do. So I did get an email. Oh, Susan, and then I see Marsha. So go ahead, Susan. Sorry. Well, in addition to the list you already have, hearing is pretty important. I had five people screened and two got hearing aids th this past year. Right. I think I know all the audiologists in Longmont. But, you know, you also mentioned about foot care and you're surprised that people would rather come to the senior center. <laughs> well, you know what? The senior center is the heart of the community as far as that goes. Not only do you get your foot tended to, you get to see people. And you know, a lot of this is preparing for when we can reopen, but just seeing and talking to people and, oh, you just went to the foot, what's that all about? Where you can exchange ideas and. It, you know, war stories, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. education was so important. And the, the nurse screening, I mean, that's who caught my high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So there were people important. who did use the nurse clinic. It just was never great numbers. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad there's great numbers, numbers, but I'm important. Good, Marcia. <laughs> well, I was good. First of all, just just uh, background for me uh, are are the clinics or were the clinics at the senior center free? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a big reason why you might want your foot care done here as opposed to. No, the foot care clinics were not free, but they took okay. Medicare. Yeah. So they they worked with folks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we were able to use some friends' money, Marsha. Mm -hmm. um, for example, when they had massage going on, we would identify stressed out caregivers who were caring for an older person who were really kind of on the edge stress-wise, and we could give them a free massage if they so chose. Um, and so we did that in partnership with Longmont United, and there mm -hmm. were caregivers who definitely took advantage of that massage. Um, so there were ways we we worked behind the scenes to make things affordable for people. 
So mm -hmm. not, not always foot care, but um, we could have if Longmont United had retained management of that program, but they didn't. So uh, uh, what I was thinking was, is it possible to take a kind of a general contractor approach where, um, you know, a, a broad healthcare provider would have the, the main contractor with the senior center and we would offer them the opportunity uh, to have subcontractors. Right. Great idea. Just throwing out the, the model. Great. Question. Great. Julie and then Art. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I really, I like that idea that Marsha brought up and with prudence, I, I agree. So I guess my question is, is that can we have um, more than one group providing those services? And then if we do have more than one group, who oversees that group and who, who's the main, the main go-to that connects between the senior center and those practitioners? Because I think that there's probably, we're probably not going to find one provider that provides all those services. Right. Um, but I think all of those services are, are super important. And so can we figure out how to formulate this so that we can have all those services? And then when it comes to Longmont United, it sounds like, you know, with their trying to cut costs, that they're cutting out the services that are important to seniors. And so therefore, maybe they're not as invested as they used to be. And so maybe we can somehow <clears throat> reconfigure the whole program and then present it to them and see if they're, they're interested in that. And if they're not, then we can step away from them and, and maybe just give them the opportunity. But it sounds like to me from everything that I've heard you know, throughout the last year of attending these meetings is that they sort of, they're not, they're sort of one foot out. Okay. All right. Well, I think we can see that there's definitely a, an interest in that and a need for that. The question I had was when we had Longmont United Hospital, was there any cost from the center to them for coming in and doing those things? Um, uh, let, so not really. Um, the, so if you charge for space for square footage, they got free space here. They had two offices they got for free. Um, they brought in their own technology. So we have quite a bit of Longmont United Hospitals technology here. Um, if they did a program that there was a fee for, um, we got the city senior center got 20% of that fee. Um, if it was free, it was free. But we handled the registration. We did a lot of the publicity through the go. They did their own, but we did, we did publicity. They had free space, um, but they paid for copies. They paid for their own phone. They paid for their own computers, their own furniture. But it was that square footage that some might argue cost the city something. That, that's not how I personally <laughs> looked at it, but somebody more in that line. So here's my thought, and let me just throw this out. Oh, go ahead, Prudence. Um, I just had one comment. Um, um, I'm not sure whether Longmont United, whoever was coming, was providing some level, especially when it comes to foot care, um, that was uh, bilingual and bicultural. Right. Yeah, great point. And I actually just wrote bilingual down because we did have a nurse. Uh, through Longmont United, who was uh, doing a free nurse clinic bilingually uh, once a month. We also did some programs in Spanish with their bilingual healthcare staff. Um, and I think other providers, UC Health, Kaiser, they, they have bilingual staff at this point, but it's about tapping them. I'm wondering, um, Great ideas. I'd like to sort of start to capture these as a scope of services. So we start with this is what we're looking for. Um, Julie's thought that we could certainly approach Longmont United first and say, Do you, can, can you deliver this? Um, and if not, we open it back up. Or 
And I have already had kind of a conversation with one of the Longmont United uh, staff that we go ahead and, and open it up and then they become a competitor. Um, I think the one manager approach is what I need. I need somebody from the healthcare world who's managing. Who they bring in, they've got a vet for quality, they've got a vet for HIPAA and insurance and all of that. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want any of my staff to have to, to do that. Um, so whether they bring in some contractors or others, I don't, that's fine. There was a period of time where Longmont United would not bring in a presenter here who was not Longmont United affiliated. And so I think as we write the scope of services, we want to be really clear that there is a broad use of the healthcare experts that are in this community. Um, eye care, dental care, hearing. Um, I think we write that into the scope of services that they've got to be willing to work with those issues, um, those providers who may or may not be affiliated with their hospital. Um, you know, So I think if we write the scope of services first, then we, we kind of know where, where we're headed. Um, I will tell you, I did get an email from Longmont United Hospital this week uh, that they have hired a position called senior services navigator. I have no idea what that means. Um, and, uh, and I will follow up with, with Mary and find out exactly what they're thinking. Um, but they, they don't appear to be reopening the health integrated medicine center. So, and that's okay, but uh, it, that's a change. So, so does that seem appropriate if I came back in February with a scope of services and you all could add to it? Absolutely. Okay. All right. And so, uh, uh, Michelle, one quick cop, uh, question. Uh, was counseling part of that one also or no? Not mental health counseling, it was not. No. Okay. No. Um, that that is strictly a city, brandy a and city. Peer counselors. That's that's really us, and the hospitals, uh, psychiatric and and mental health services have been more along an emergency room evaluation, not ongoing care or ongoing service. So okay. they used to. Longmont United used to have a whole department, but not anymore. Susan, were you going to say something? I'm sorry. Yes, you mentioned the senior navigator. I can just tell you from my experience, a nurse navigator in the cancer world helps sort through the resources you may need, the side effects you may need. So I would think it would be more of their patients maybe reentering, you know, the community after hospital stay or lining up what they need to come home. Right. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I know that UC Health has a very strong senior program in Fort Collins called the Aspen Club. They have done some uh, marketing of an Aspen Club here in Longmont. And of course, that was pre-COVID. All of our work sort of got uh, refocused the last nine months. So, um, you know, there's different approaches to what hospitals are doing. And I think certainly this pandemic has changed a lot. So um, with your uh, okay, and maybe a show of hands, I will um, follow up with Longmont United, put that on pause, that do a scope of services, and then we will come back and decide whether we want to open that up to Longmont United or open it up to a broad group, unless you all have an opinion about that today. Marsha. Um, two things. First of all, um, just this is a city service kind of thing and, and municipalities do business this way. I don't think that uh, Longmont United would take exception to saying we're gonna, we're gonna have the bid round. Right. I don't think they'd have a problem with that. Right. Um, the other thing is I just thought is something that might easily be left out because it's not usual, but I wonder if 
um, a COVID long haul screening um, clinic once in a while for at least the next year or two until people understand would be a good service on the list. Because I'm hearing really frightening numbers of uh, about the people who continue to have symptoms. Long-term issues, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Good one. So do you want to just do a show of hands or whether, um, so okay to do February scope of services, yes or no? Yes, okay. Um, wanna work towards sort of ending with Longmont United and doing an open competitive? Do you wanna have Longmont United be have a first, I don't know, right of refusal? So um, open competitive, show of hands, one, two, three, okay. Longmont United, first right of refusal, one, two, three. Uh -huh. All right, I love that. <laughs> so um, that, that helps me to know where my conversation with uh, Mary from Longmont United goes. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, Julie. So honestly, I'm really, you know, I feel like there's people who are on the, have been on the board longer and have, have know the relationship. And so I'm sort of either way, you know, it's really, it's sort of, in my personal opinion, it's more up to the more senior members right. on the board, just because you know the situation a lot better than I do. Well, um, and, and so this is, um, so, so I appreciate your advice on this. I may or may not follow it, actually. I, I may just say goodbye and uh, move forward, but it's good to know where what you all are thinking, and I appreciate that very much. Um, a good, good, good part of being a social worker is we are not afraid of termination, and it um, door shuts and other things open up, and, and, that, and I'm, not, I'm okay with, with ending things and looking at what, what happens. I, um, I want to get something in place that when I retire, it's got some really good strength and longevity. And um, that's important to me. And so I want to do this right and uh, want your support. So we'll, we'll figure that out. I'm not going to make any rash decisions, but it's good to know where y'all are at. Janine. No, I have one consideration, Michelle. I think people need to be acknowledged for their past support oh, yeah. totally. for the past 20 years. The other side of that is they didn't just cut all of these services for no reason. And, you know, one of my concerns is establishing with them if they may be in a position where they're going to go through another sale. And, you know, I think that for right now, my sense of what's going on there is that they're kind of in a little bit of a precarious situation. So that might have, you know, that may be one of my concerns. Well, you know, one of the, one of the pieces that I, I didn't speak to um, that's important to me is the partnership. The relationship and that's built on communication follow through trust and um and i my staff have experience with kaiser with uc health with longmont united on all of those things and that's actually part of the decision i think is do they have an established track record where they have followed through um where they've been a good communicator where they're invested in a relationship. And um, I'm not sure how I, how I build that into the scope of services, but that's gonna be telling for me. Um, and historically, Michelle Whitmore, Renita, Megan, those three folks have been the heart of that partnership and the relationship. They've all been let go. Um, I don't know the new person. Um, so I, I got to figure out how we build that relationship partnership piece in. So, um, I, I'm still working on that one. So <laughs> maybe I, I'll talk to 
I don't know. I'll figure that out. I was going to say, I wonder what my husband would say, how good I am at that relationship partnership thing. But um, those are the elements that they can develop you know, they can deliver maybe high quality services, but if they're not communicating and talking and building, I don't want them, you know, that I can, I can go and hire or pay somebody to come in and deliver a great program, but I want something more. Um, so I got to figure out how to craft that. Susan. So if you're going out to UC Health, Kaiser, et cetera, uh, maybe Dispatch Health, is another one you would offer that to? Yeah, so there's no limit. I mean, if the city, like Marcia says, city does this all the time, when it's an open process, you never know who's going to apply. And as okay. I said, 20 years ago, the YMCA competed. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think that's enough, but there'll be more, more to come. So thank you. Great, great discussion. Hey, you guys, I have to, I've, I've got another meeting in a few minutes, so I'm going to sign off and I'm going to miss the rest, miss you guys. Michelle, thank you so much. I'm sad that we didn't get to do flowers and certificates and yeah. food and celebrate you, but Maybe back in, later in the spring, we can reconvene and just do something sweet. It'd be well, nice. Marsha or somebody already promised that, so oh, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Last meeting. I love it. Take yeah, care, we'll Michelle. Have a reunion. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'll be in touch about TRG, and uh, it's nice. I love, I love this, love hearing what's going on. So maybe I'll pop Too in. Michelle. Thank you, okay, Michelle. bye, yeah. you guys. Bye. 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 Um, I'd like to move on to the springboard member recruitment. Uh, Michelle, do, do you have more information about that? So I got some information from the city clerk's office. I'm going to put it in the spring go. We'll put it out in our regular emails that are going out. Um, and then work towards hopefully Marsha and company will have some folks to interview in the spring to fill those two uh, vacant positions. You all can certainly also, as you're talking to people, let them know. Um, we have a uh, some other opportunities. And so I just want you to know it won't happen till probably, what do you, May maybe Marsha? That's May or June. May or June. Um, so we have several months to do some recruitment. So we hopefully we'll, we'll move in that direction. I have a question about that. Um, if if uh, we are able to recruit someone, do they go online and fill out an application? Just yes. go online and pull up an application and fill it out? Yes. And then it won't be considered until later uh, right. in the spring. Okay. Correct. And there was one person who had completed an application and, and I think she hadn't been a registered voter for a year. And so um, she had to withdraw. So um, maybe by June, um, her year will have been uh, completed and she'll be back in the running. I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, she's a regular participant here. She'd be a really good board member. I was sad that that, that kicked her out. But um, yep, just go in, put your application in and, and go from there. And did you say we have two positions for the uh, senior board? We do our one three-year term and one one-year alternate. Okay. And if folks are interested, they like Julie, they can come as a guest. So you can always invite them to come and get a feel for it. It's a good Thank time you. to do that. Yeah, yeah. Twenty twenty one goals. Susan, 
That should be corrected to 2021 goal, not plural. Open the senior center. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think that see 2021 goals and a 2020 annual report um, are sort of linked and, and um, typically the outgoing president Janine would work on an annual report. Um, my staff and the friends board are also trying to figure out what is 2020 year end look like? What did we accomplish? And so I really think um, Janine, the annual report for 2020 is probably very short and brief um, and will look very different than past reports. And then I think to Susan's point, what are your goals going forward? Well, you have one now, which is the health and wellness um, partnership. Um, but if there are some others, um, I, I just want to invite you to think about this. This could be a February agenda item, or you could have discussion now, however you want to, you want to move forward. So they're, they're slightly linked, but um, recognizing it's an odd, odd time. Prudence, go ahead. Just to say I'm leaving the meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you, Prudence. Happy New Year, Prudence. Sheila. Um, is it possible to get copies of the year-end reports for, say, the last two or three years? Yes. I can send those to you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Bill, um, I am wondering if I know last year we met and you assisted me with that annual report, and I'm wondering if uh, that would be possible this year, um, e e either at the center or on a Zoom, either one, whatever would work for you if you're if you have time to do that this year. I know you're rather a busy person these days. You know, Marsha, I would love to do that. So I'll set that up um, with uh, going to Orange. We could actually probably meet in person in one of the rooms here, if that's what your preference is, or we can do it virtually. So whichever works. I was wondering if Susan, you might be interested in joining us to get an experience about how that's put together. Would love to be an apprentice. Uh, <laughs> so one of the things, um, and I, this is really more for Janine, but Susan, I, I can meet at the senior center. Um, that's probably the best if we want to meet in person or we can do it Zoom. So you all just tell me what your preference is. I would love to meet in person. I don't care if I have to wear a mask. Uh, me too, and I'm going to be clean after today, so. <laughs> All right. So I am currently at the Senior Center Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm actually up in your neck of the woods, Janine. I'm in Spring Creek. So um, I'll look for the next week or two and set something up with you, Susan and Janine. Okay. okay. That sounds good. Thank you. And I think we can, Susan, you can, you and I and Janine, we can talk about goals for the year. If there's anything anybody has they want to mention today, we can record that or we can have a more uh, robust conversation in February. Uh, anyone have anything to uh, add at this point. Art? I was going to uh, ask Michelle, uh, do you still have positions on, you still, do I understand you still have positions on the Friends Board as well? We have one position on the Friends Board, Art. I think one. Okay, and then the other question is, has there been any discussion yet on helping with taxes like they have in the past? 
Yes, yeah, so Larry and Maggie, who has been our volunteer coordinator, are working out the details. Some of it was going to kind of revolve around the county moving away from red. <laughs> so um, hopefully we won't have another spike, a post-Christmas, post-New Year's spike. So they are working through that art, and I believe that will happen. And do we, uh, at this point, uh, can people call in for appointments yet, or we're not doing any of that yet? Not yet, not yet. But do you want me to let you know when that happens? Yes, please. Okay. Michelle, in the go, it says January 21st. I knew it was the 20th or 21st. It's the 21st. Yeah. But I know that just in the last week, Susan, some information came through from AARP, and I just don't know the details. So I'll get that pulled together and send that out to the board. Thank you. Yeah. Um, shall we move on to reports? Sheila has a comment, question. I just have um, a quick question for Michelle. Mm -hmm. When she's been, oh, I'm good. I'm doing minutes, and yeah. So go ahead. <laughs> I I just wondered what the um, take up on the the virtual go has been. Um, I know people have been taking classes and attending virtually. Has it has it yeah. been worthwhile? So I think we're up to about a thousand people have participated in various programs the last nine months. Obviously, that's not our 10,000 a month that we were used to when we were open. Um, we've gotten really great feedback on people who are appreciating the weekly email newsletter. Um, and then people are still coming by and picking up the hard hard copies. So um, it, it's not it's not been terrible but i don't know that we had a goal i don't know what we that we knew what to expect um yeah. it's been fun we've had um a former board member marietta gonzalez who now lives in california she has participated in some of our programs yeah. and a former computer tech volunteer um henry who lives in north carolina he's been delivering programs and participating and so there's been some kind of fun connections happening. So, yeah. That's great, thank you. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So is it to me for my report, Janine? Is that what you'd like to, you're muted. Um. <laughs> I was having a problem with my unmute. Um, all right. I'd like to move on to reports. Um, and Michelle, you get to go first. So just two things, well, maybe three things. But um, the Friends annual meeting is January 26th at 3 o'clock. Um, we have always invited the advisory board to attend that meeting. Um, you will get an invitation. If you um, have been a donor to the Friends, you will get an invitation, but you will also get an invitation um, as an advisory board member. So uh, be just on the alert for that. It will be virtual and um, it will be a Zoom meeting. So you can either uh, call in or video in. Um, been a lot of questions the last two weeks about vaccines for older adults, uh, vaccines for people living in senior independent living. And so just know that um, uh, I am involved in that. Um, there has been some interest in possibly using the senior center as a, a vaccination clinic for seniors. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I have certainly said yes, that's a great use of the senior center. Um, doing some advocacy on behalf of all of the independent senior living facilities, not just the LHA ones, to make sure that we understand the communal living of a uh, high risk population and getting some doing some advocacy. Our city manager has also been doing that, as well as our public uh, Boulder County Public Health. So I think we're all aware of um, 
the the older adult independent living communities and and uh, being conscientious of the number of people over 70 who live there. So people are calling, wondering how to how to get in. I know somebody um, was on the phone for four hours at Kaiser trying to get signed up for a vaccine. So hopefully over the next week or two, that information will become more clear and we will be a point of trying to get that information out to people. So um, we're doing our best to be good advocates right now and partners. Yeah, Susan. So on the next door website, the uh, Boulder County Community Health had a form to fill out and some of my neighbors have already been called. They're getting their vaccinations this week. Yeah, it's, it's about where your information, where you get your information and getting on the list. Yep. And I know some people's general practitioners have called them and told them, come in and get your shot. It's just not, um, not as easy for some as it has been for others. Yeah, Janine. Um, Michelle, I, I don't know if it would come up, but if uh, just for you to know, uh, I am very willing to volunteer my time and services uh, to administer vaccines. If uh, at the senior center, if in any way that comes up, it's a possibility. Yeah, that is great, Janine. Thank you for that. And um, I, I have indicated we would need to do some things relative to our custodial staff, like bring them back from the rec centers. <laughs> so right. <laughs> we are taking care of the building. So we'll see how that unfolds. But um, okay. thank you. Thanks for that. And, I, um, and so we are still working with Longmont Housing, very excited. We hired a regional asset manager. So some of the work I've been doing has a lot of the work is moving to Lisa, but I am still at Spring Creek two days a week. Um, Amy is still very, very involved in the renovation at Aspen Meadows and helping folks pack and move and come back, move back in and unpack. Um, and so we're still doing a lot of housing retention, eviction prevention work, um, and really trying to work with folks to, to help them stay safely housed. So, and that work will continue. I think our relationship with Longmont Housing and, the, and helping people stay housed will, will continue long after um, they are fully staffed. So that, that also is continuing. And I think that's it for me. Marsha, City Council. Before we move on on that, does anybody, I mean, I don't know that Senior Center or anybody else would have this information, but maybe one of the other board members. Do we know uh, I mean, how many doses are actually coming into the city of Longmont, or late bases that people can actually get them? I mean, I, I, I'm like you, I, I've tried to get a hold of BA for two days trying to, because I'm a veteran and seeing if I can get a shot there and those lines are busy all the time. And I tried with uh, Kaiser yesterday and I was on there for over an hour. I still couldn't get through anybody. So I didn't know if anybody has any information as to if people are asking questions, what can we tell them at this time? I don't know that answer. I'm gonna look at you, Marsha, to see <laughs> if you know anything. <laughs> Um, and if, if none of us really have that information, I'm happy to do some digging, but go ahead, Marsha. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, there are, are several things related to, uh, to Art's question. I don't have a direct answer, and it's uh, a question that I hadn't heard before, whether we have, uh, you know, any liaison to the veterans administration. I mean, we don't even have a very good liaison re relationship with the county in in some respects. You know, we've we've run into barriers trying to to help people uh, with housing assistance and stuff like that, because the people who control the various funds don't talk to each other very well. And then that's been a recent hobby horse of mine. Um, so uh, first, uh, last night's city council meeting did not, you know, other than 
than completing pretty much by acclamation the reorganization of the housing authority. Um, uh, you know, nothing of direct relevance to the senior center really, uh, really happened last night. Michelle, I wanted to ask uh, in terms of the year end report, are, are you or, or would the new president or, you know, who will report uh, to the council? Um, you know, especially now, I think we're going to be still virtual, but it doesn't matter. We need, you know, I'd like to see, um, I'd like to see it on the council agenda. And I think it's especially uh, important. I would also hope that that would include uh, as much as you have. I mean, obviously there are dependencies, but uh, uh, the reopening plan uh, even if it's uh, hooked to a milestone rather than a date um, would would be excellent because I know a lot of people are, are missing the services and and are honestly planning their lives around it. Right, right. Great so, point. And so typically it would be the president and myself. So it may end up being Janine, Susan, and I, and certainly all the board would be invited, but... Um, make a note of that, Marcia. And, um, and I put on the February agenda to talk about the reopening because we actually are really starting to dive deep into that. So good, uh, good, good timing for that. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, in terms of, of council policy and city policy, um, in my ombudsman the ombudsman part of my role as, as member of council, um, I have been noting a lot of confusion and fear around applications for assistance. And you, know, you may be aware that especially with this eviction moratorium being extended by tiny increments so that people never know uh, when they could be hit by a notice to quit. Um, you know, people need the assistance and they uh, are afraid to apply for it because there's all of this, well, if I'm getting unemployment benefits, I'm not eligible, right? And it's illegal, right? Um, you know, and so we really need to, one, strengthen our uh, liaison relationships with the people who control the various funds. Um, you know, I talked to Karen Roney about it and she could easily tell me who is administering the money and where the money is, but she couldn't easily tell me how you find your way into accessing some of it if you ha have a need case. Um, so we need to, the, you know, the phrase that I've been using is a no wrong door policy um, where, you know, you don't have to knock, make, you don't have to make more than one cold call. And, and uh, uh, we need to do outreach, get the message out that, you know, you're not going to get in trouble because you applied for something you're not eligible for unless you lied to try to make yourself eligible. Um, and uh, Harold last night said, uh, said something I think very encouraging, which he says, when you come to us for help, it is our job to get it right, to lead you through the process. Um, so I think that's a, a really important message for all of us in public service and in outreach to take to heart because it's pretty frightening the number of people who could be getting assistance who aren't. And you're muted, Michelle, by the way, um, guys, I hear you, I see you saying, yeah, but <laughs> so uh, the, you know, that's, that's my main, <coughs> excuse me, message from the city is, is, uh, we all need to work harder at uh, dispelling the fear and connecting people with the help they need 
or whenever they do finally uh, pull the plug on the eviction delays, um, uh, you know, we're going to have a real crisis on our hands. Yeah, there, there are definitely also a number of folks who are in fear around accepting benefits because it puts them in jeopardy of their status. Um, and in terms of their residency and, and citizenship. And so we're, we're really trying to find alternative ways for folks to make sure they can access support where, wherever it comes from. So a great point, Marsha. Yeah. Um, any any questions for me? Because that's really, those are the main, oh, um, we should be getting a report soon, but they are looking at at breaking ground on, on new LHA facilities on the land proximate to the suites uh, this spring. So, um, you know, more, um, more housing is coming down the pike. Um, there are, it seems like I say this every year, but there are also um, a, a considerable load of, of uh, affordable housing of various sorts at the permit stage. And I'm, I'm hoping that we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see more of it coming out of the ground uh, this spring. Okay, well, if nobody's got any questions, I think I'm set. Um, area on aging, I think uh, Sarah sent us all an email and an update on that. Did everyone receive that email? Yep. Okay. Uh, friends, Susan. So again, Michelle stole my thunder. The big thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the big thing is they still have a vacancy. Um, but the meeting, if you can attend on January 26th, that would be good. Um, they're sorting out their officers. They've pretty much got uh, everybody set except a vice president as of the meeting. And they're working on closing out the old bank account so everything can follow Jane Cox, who oversees the investments, and it will all be at Great Western. So that should be closed out shortly, and all our investments and checking account funds will be at the Great Western Bank. We didn't hear what you said, Janine. I'm I'm off mute. Can you hear now me? Now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Is that meeting um, a Zoom meeting? Yes. Okay. Um, TRG Michelle has already done her presentation, uh, Boulder County Latino Coalition. Art, do you have anything to report? We did not meet last, we did not meet okay. last month, so I have no report. I, um, I do want to just say um, that a uh, we lost a much loved and fabulous advocate, uh, Nino Gallo, who worked for Boulder County uh, Community Action Programs, passed away from COVID. And um, it has been very, very hard. Um, I think many of us have worked with Nino for many years. He has family members in the city and in the county uh, in different capacities. And so I think that the members of the co 
Boulder County Latino Coalition have taken this very hard as have many people. So I just want to acknowledge we lost, we've lost many people, um, but in particular, Nina was a wonderful advocate and a uh, fine human being. And uh, I'm sorry that we had to say goodbye. You know, I owe everybody an apology because in the council report, the first thing I should have mentioned, uh, and I'm just dim on Wednesday mornings because of council evenings, um, <laughs> But there was a, a mayoral proclamation last night designating yesterday, which was Nino's birthday, as Nino Gallo Day. And there was a, 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 very, a very touching set of remarks um, from Nino's family. So you maybe everybody should, should watch that if you weren't, on, uh, weren't watching the council meeting last night, it's online. I, I very much appreciate you saying that, Marcia. Thank you. I apologize for not getting it in earlier. Longmont Economic Development Partnership. I do not have anything to report. Um, and sustainability. Um, I think we also received an email with update about that. Michelle? Marcia uh, or uh, Janine, I actually got a phone call this morning from Sarah Berry who wanted me to sort of say two things. Um, she references these in her report, but they are not a part of her report. She felt like she was sharing this as a community member, not, not as a board member. And she just wanted to let the board know that um, she herself has used dispatched health, dispatch health, and has had just fabulous experiences with dispatch health. And you'll see in her report that they actually did a, a presentation to the Aging Advisory Council. And she just wanted to let you all know that she's had really great experience with them. Um, I would say that during COVID, they have been a source for people who maybe had to do a regular blood draw, but didn't want to go to their uh, doctor's office to do that. And Dispatch Health came to them, or they didn't drive. So via for a period of time, you know, they couldn't get to their doctor's office and Dispatch Health would come to them. So she wanted me to give a shout out to Dispatch Health. The other thing in her report, she talks about Liz Parker from the DA's office giving an update on scams and frauds. And so Sarah wanted to also say um, she hopes that we will do some programs virtually with Liz in the spring on scams and frauds. And that um, if you all were interested in having Liz come to one of your board meetings, um, that it might also be worthy of consideration. So you can, uh, that's from Sarah, sort of on the side, I guess. <laughs> Um, I'd like to add a little bit to that. I have um, had conversation with her as I'm working with a client right now who's been a victim of major fraud uh, through the Resource Center. And uh, it, it is beyond my belief how much of a problem it is, especially uh, since COVID. And um, seniors are so vulnerable uh, and the cooperation with uh, the uh, district attorney's office has been phenomenal. And I think it would be wonderful to have her come uh, and do a little presentation for us. She's, she is really delightful. Uh, does anyone else have any other statements, issues, questions, Art? Uh, Marsha, I want to ask you, where is the city at with the uh, chief of police position that looking at filling? Um, 
I have I have no reports beyond what you already know that that the um, civic engagement survey is out there. Um, I apologize. I don't even know if it's closed uh, yet or not. Um, but uh, I, I don't know where they are in terms of identifying candidates. Uh, I, I will make a note to find that out for next month. Or if, if it, you feel more urgent about it, I can send out a note to the group. I'm okay. just curious. I'm just curious. I feel like the survey closes this Friday. I may be wrong, but I think it's this, this Friday the survey closes. Yeah, if you haven't taken it, then get in there. Yeah. Uh, where where do we find that? Michelle, I mean, uh, yeah, for Michelle, how are uh, Veronica and the other intake folks, are they staying busy, per, extremely busy, or just so, so? Or? They would tell you they are busier than ever and are so appreciative to have Melissa on board. So um, they have been doing a lot of um, resource work normally, plus now that we have this closer tie with the housing authority, there is a whole lot more going on for folks, especially the isolation, the cutoff from other resources. And so Melissa, Amy, and Veronica are busier than ever. Are, okay. And they, they have continued to um, do in-person assistance as the orders allowed us to do. And so where other agencies stopped doing home visits, I think Amy had three yesterday. Now it might be on the front porch and all they might do is exchange papers, um, but they, they are busier than ever. And so um, when Marsha or Janine was talking about the frauds and scams, I think we, we've been doing mandatory elder abuse reports. We're working on other scams uh, there that work didn't end um and they continue to stay very very busy and they um all uh, melissa and veronica plus uh, monica have been involved in some of the specific covid testing outreach clinics to latino community members um and we've been doing end of life documents for people um who are you know, the COVID piece has really frightened them and their family members got a lovely thank you note from one family member for helping pull that that end of life paperwork together. So they they continue to stay very, very busy. Okay. And my final comment is just that if you do get the vaccines or you get something that uh, is going to be made available that you may need some help with here at the, or there at the center. Uh, I, like Janine, would be willing to help in any way I can too, whether it be checking people in, uh, translating, whatever. So Art, thank you. Thank you. And my understanding is that um, they need a place where people can get the shot and then wait 15 minutes. I, there's a post post-vaccine uh, period of time. And I think that some traffic flow, as well as, uh, you know, just making sure everybody understands and, and, and everything is communicated well. And that piece of things, I, I think they might absolutely want some volunteers. So I will, I will definitely pass your offer and Janine's along. Thank you. I just don't know what that's going to look like yet. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, to answer Julie's question, the survey is on Engage Longmont, and I will, um, I'll, uh, it's easy to search for, but I'll mail out the link after the meeting. Um, what a, thank you, Marcia. Um, Michelle, I, I'm, I'm with Art. If I can help, you know, I don't have the, uh, the medical background, but if I can help in any way, you know, just checking people in or, you know, just being with them after they've had their shot and that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I have some time that I can volunteer as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I think one of the things we um, still need to talk about is for people who don't have transportation, how would they get 
here. So I'm hoping to have a conversation with Via about that. And uh, if it comes to be, that'll be, uh, that'll be another level of that clinic that I think we're going to have to address. Yeah, Susan. So would the not one week notice to people to get to their vaccine appointment, Cultivate is waiving the one week requirement to get vax people to their vaccinations. Good to know. Thank you. I love Cultivate. <laughs> They're great. Marsha, I just wanted to make a comment. You can pass it on. I thought that that uh, questionnaire that came out about uh, director of public safety and what people were looking for and what was important to them, I think that was really well done. I don't oh. know if that, if that was specific to Longmont, but I don't think I've ever taken um, a questionnaire that comprehensive uh, before. And it really made me feel good about what the city's considerations are in this position. So if you'll pass Thank that you. on for me. Yeah, I will, I will pass that on. Um, I think I've said before, it is entirely up to the city manager about that hire. And I think he's being tremendously sensitive to the community and conscientious about realizing that this may be long-term the decision he makes that affects us the most, that and saving LHA. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I will pass that on. I actually don't know who is responsible for designing that survey, um, but I'm sure he does, so. So I actually do know who it was because oh, cool. uh, she is a former public safety employee, uh, Elise Flesher. So she was a longtime Boulder Sheriff. Um, and then she came to work for Longmont Police and then she was a researcher. And so, um, yeah, she was the designer with a group of folks who, but the, she has her doctorate in criminal justice research and analysis. So she's really quite bright and she did that, so. Well, you just know all kinds of cool stuff, don't you, Michelle? We've had a lot of great city employees come and go through my lifetime. Yeah. She's one of them. Good. Well, you can pass it on too, if you know her personally. Janine, we can't hear you. I know you're not muted, but how about now? Yeah, now. Yes, okay. Good. Does anyone else have any questions, any other agenda statements before we take a motion to close the meeting? Okay. Would someone like to make a, a motion to adjourn? I would. <laughs> I hope that we close it. <laughs> I'll and second. Sheila seconds that motion. Well, thank you all. Please uh, stay well and safe. And uh, I personally am looking forward to getting back to the senior center now that we're orange. Yep. So <laughs> take care, everybody. Happy New Year. Bye bye. Happy New Year. Again. Happy New Year is right. Yeah. Julie, I will catch up with you about the, the manual just as soon as uh, Monica lets me know it's done. Okay. Right. That was great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.